Why did author Holly Gaddery decide to write her memoir? We're going to ask her, but before we do, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so you can keep up to date with the latest author interviews and behind the book stories. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. Today, I'm very excited to have author Halle Gattery as a guest. Halle is a writer, editor, con creative consultant, mother of four, and when she's not parenting and when the gyms are open, you can find her lifting heavy things. We are going to chat about Halle's memoir, Fuse which was published by Guernica Editions. And I'll give you a little taste about what it's about. Drawing on her own experiences as a woman of Iranian and British Isle descent, writer Halle Gattery dives into conflicts and uncertainty surrounding the biracial female, female body and identity especially as it butts up against the different expectations of each culture. Painfully and at times reluctantly, Fuse probes and explores the documented prevalence of mental health issues in biracial women. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Halle. Thank you so much, Crystal. It's good to be here. I'm glad to have you here. So first of all, two very fun things about you. You like to lift heavy things and watching BBC period pieces. Yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> I, I, I love it. So first of all, heavy things. I've got like pictures of couches over my head. What do you mean by heavy things? <laughs> um, yeah, no, I just, I just like to lift like weights essentially I don't I don't really lift anything that's not meant to be lifted. like it I'm all, I've, I already have enough injuries I'm trying to be sensible um no I just I just love weightlifting I've it's proof of life right it's yes. it's a way for me to you know you, you're given this body I always say if you you know having a body you don't use is like having a you know I don't know what a fancy car is a Ferrari and yeah. or a Lamborghini and you just leave it in the garage it's like you have this body that's incap as capable of so many wonderful thing it's like I'm not saying I have to start doing like back walkovers anytime soon but or you know, <laughs> or, you know take up the beam or something I'm just saying like I like to use my body and it's it, it feels good it makes me feel better to work out it's not it used to be an aesthetic thing now it's just mm -hmm. uh I'm alive thank god <laughs> yeah yeah I, I love it. And I also love that you like BBC period pieces too. I, I do. It's, um, I, I like the past because it's predictable, right? Yeah, um, yeah. I have a lot of anxiety about the future. So I love watching and reading and I mean, anything about the past. I mean, the truth is about the past is the past always changes too. It's not as predictable as we think it is. It's a very Western notion that, you know, time is linear not necessarily the truth so but as far as you know bringing my frantic mind to rest watching BBC period dramas is just very very soothing for me and if I need a break from my kids it is one way to make sure everybody <laughs> leave <laughs> guys I'm putting that upstairs downstairs again they're like oh we're out of here <laughs> yeah, yeah. Clear <laughs> so um memoir like what made you decide to write your memoir uh, well it wasn't a memoir at first I actually wrote an earlier incarnation of this as my MFA thesis and I made it into a novella not a very good novella um, in retrospect I was very proud of it at the time um, but I tried to fictionalize it um, because I was really uncomfortable writing about it uh, and then I sent out a few places. I mean, memoirs, I mean, not memoirs, novellas are hard enough to publish, period, especially just one, which is all I had. And I usually got the same response back, which is, you know, the writing's really good, but it feels like, you know, you're skimming the surface of something else. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't feel fleshed out and whole. So 
I know I, I made some of them into poems. I thought, okay, I'll go that route. But again, I was really shying away from just telling it as it is. I didn't want, I didn't want to write about my life mainly because I didn't want to write about my family. Um, so I tried that and, you know, had some success with it, but I didn't send it out anywhere. I just had this moment, probably, not probably, definitely around the time that I stopped drinking that, uh, of how scared I've spent my whole life being yeah. and how scared of the truth I've spent my whole life feeling. And I just thought to myself that if I'm going to do this, just tell the truth. And that's when I started building what is now Fuse more completely. Mm -hmm. And it was really the messiest process I've ever been through in my life. I'd rather go through childbirth again. <laughs> like, all four of them, one after another, than do this again. And part of it was just due to my lack of organization as a writer to begin with. Like yeah. that I, I wasn't organized in what I thought I was doing. And it was so many different things before it was this. And I didn't have any plan. I didn't have any, you know, we're going to start here, go here. I had no structure for the book. It was just really messy as earlier editors can attest to. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Holly, I have to say, you know, any creative person, when you release your work into the world, you feel incredibly vulnerable. Now for you, you've released a memoir. So it, it's not like you can hide behind a fictional character and your novel is brave it's honest you write you write about um you know anything men, anything from mental um issues and it's it's just so brave and I have to say when you first released it out did you have one of those moments where you're like oh my gosh what have I done yeah, I'm still having those moments. Like, <laughs> yeah. just like, a, like a wave, like, okay, no, I'm cool with this. I'm cool with this. Oh my God, what have I done? Okay, yeah. I'm cool with this. Especially because I haven't, like, I'm starting to read it now because I'm starting to do events and readings. But once it came out, I didn't look at it. Uh, and like, I didn't want to read it again. I didn't want anything to do with it. I felt very, I'm done with you. You know, it's just, I, I everybody else can have it. I don't want it anymore. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the thing is, is this was accepted for publication like two, almost three years ago. So mm -hmm. it, it's like, I, I moved on and it's like, yeah. wow, you know, so people are just like, oh, I'll have people read it and be like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you were, you're going through that. It's like, I'm not going through it anymore. This is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. some, some of the stuff follows me around, but like at the worst of it, mm -hmm. especially in those, you know, blackout twenties, um, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not, this, I'm, I am the same person, parts of me are the same person, but it's, that's not where I am anymore. So yeah, mm -hmm. I definitely felt and still feel a lot of trepidation, a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, but ultimately what carries me through that is the fact that when I was really struggling, when I was at my absolute worst, I would have killed to read something like this Yes. for to, if anything to make me feel less alone. And I just felt like I can't be the only one, whether, you know, it's, whether it's a mixed race experience or whether it's the experience of trying to navigate that really complex relationship we can have with our parents where, you know, we love them very, very much mm -hmm. and we're not blaming them at all. But the fact is we're trying to see how we became who we are. So ultimately I don't regret doing it, but there is fear and, there, there, there has been, and I have received, you know, negative comments and negative feedback and not really anything to do with my writing style, but the fact that I talk about this at all, you know, like, so it's, it's challenging for me, but ultimately I'm happy I did it because I, I spent my life being told to be quiet and that I don't want to be quiet and people that are forced to be quiet, um, get sick, silence is yes. sick. So I don't, you know, I don't want, you don't have to share everything. I certainly didn't share everything in this or parts that I ended up cutting out I kept yes. a lot of stuff to myself which if you read the book you're like god did she <laughs> <laughs> there's stuff she didn't say um, <laughs> um, and uh yeah so I think I think it's I think I'm, I'm braver for everybody else yeah. if you know what I mean. like I yeah. I published I published one little 
section um, on CBC Parents where I talk about sympathizing with Joan Crawford and Mummy Dearest. Um, and not saying that she should beat her child with a wire hanger. That's just like, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's a bit much. But I sympathize with the being a parent who doesn't, who has a mental illness and doesn't have any support yeah. um, and feeling like you, or, and doesn't know how to deal with it all. And I, I sympathize with that. And I got so much bad feedback, like, you know, like, so just, and, and even with the book, I've got so much bad feedback, but for every, all the bad feedback, there are people that reach out to you privately and quietly and a little bit you know, very almost shamefully and say, I know what you mean. I'm going through this too. And that always makes yeah. it worth it for every stupid yeah. thing you say to me that makes it worth. It. Yeah. Well, I, I think you're incredibly brave and I really admire your honesty. And as you're, as you were just saying, you know, it will reach the right ears and there will be people who will real it will resonate with, and it will make a big difference. So I think, I think, I think, I think you're amazing and all the negative, the negative people can go away. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I think so too. <laughs> uh, and, um, and I kept thinking, you know, the whole time as a reader, when I was going through your book, Halle, like you, you divulge um, some very personal things, you know, you talk about an eating disorder, um, self-hatred, self-mutilation. And as a writer, you know, it is therapeutic to write these things down. But at the end of the day, if you've been going through a particularly heavy day, what did you do to decompress? Um, just in my day-to-day -day life, it's movement, exercise mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, I'm, it's, I'm still a work in progress at that one because I mean, cutting out alcohol made a huge difference. Yeah. That, that yeah. made life so much easier to deal with. I know people use it to cope, but it actually just contributes to the problem, which is not me here standing on a soapbox saying everyone should quit drinking. Yeah. Whatever, do your own thing. Like, it's not about that. For me, it just made everything 10 billion times worse. So there was that. It's also, I mean, I, I'd like to say something really like cliche, you know, give yourself permission to. Everyone says that. I don't give myself permission to anything. I mean, I force myself to do everything. I have the worst inner voice ever. <laughs> She's mean. Um, but every now and then I can kind of, you know, duct tape that voice. And just be like, and I'll sit down and I'll do deep breathing or I'll binge watch the Golden Girls or I'll yeah. read a book I'll read. Because I mean, movement's good for me, but sometimes I'll like, there's too much movement. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, the body just, needs to rest and you need to nurture that parasympathetic nervous system and not do anything yeah. and I wish I could say I meditate but I don't <laughs> I, 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 I've tried it I, my, as my book my reading is meditative for me it's a an extension of that and that's about as yeah. meditative or, or going for a long run I can enter like trance states but again I don't want to force my body to move that much more. So I, I don't really have anything. What I do really depends on the day and what I can do. Because with four kids around, it's not like if I'm having a bad day, I can always yeah. be like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, sit down and do nothing. But I just yeah. try to like capture the little brief things that I can do, the deep breathing, the you know, belly breathing where your ribs are going to explode. Like, it's like oh my gosh. so it's, I'm still a very much a work in progress in that. And, you know, yes, writing this was, in a way therapeutic but I mean I found like I got ther therapy for my therapist yes. I, I didn't need to write this to feel better about it I wrote this to reach anyone else mm -hmm. who may feel like this way the little lifeline oh, that's yeah the little lifeline into the void <laughs> um you obviously love your family very deeply you know that comes across in your memoir for anyone else else Holly who wants to write a memoir but they're a little hesitant because of of what their family might say what did, what advice would you have for them I mean what I every family is different yeah um but what I did was just when I was writing this thought to myself um what I'm saying now will I be okay with the fact that I said it 30 years from now yeah. will will I feel comfortable you know standing behind everything that I said you know because you know 
I can't say that all my family was supportive of this. I'd like, I'd like to say they were, but I know my mom was like really nervous and she has the book, but you know, doesn't really want to read it. And I said, then don't mm-hmm. read it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't read it if it's going to make you uncomfortable. I mean, yeah. it's weird to read about yourself. I get that. Um, my older brother was very supportive. He said, you know, you could write, you know, Kayvon's and Kayvon's an asshole from the sky. And I wouldn't <laughs> care as long as it made you feel better about whatever Aww. you're going through. So he was great. My younger brother just didn't say anything. I don't, he, complete military silence. I don't know if he knows the book exists. And my dad said, he hasn't read it. And I don't want my dad to read it because my dad can't interpret simple text messages. I said, to him. <laughs> you know, dad, you know, dad, can you, can you make sure that the potty seat comes home with hot? And it's just like, I do not know what this is. It's like, don't read my book. <laughs> yes. You're not a good reader. Um, so I, I don't think he will. All he asked is that I not, he knows I needed to do this and that I don't write about him in future. Um, yeah. yeah. I, fine with because I don't think I have anything left to say on that front so I mean you can you can get people to read everything yeah. I didn't want to do that they yeah. didn't read it I didn't want to give anybody else any more say over anything so I just really tried to frame this as this is my experience my interpretation of this that's it I don't pretend to know what other people thought I don't pretend to know I don't I don't put words in people's mouths that weren't there like I don't yeah. And if I'm not, if I don't know about something, I say, I don't know. Um, right. But th- that, that was my thing. And I, other people I know, you know, I've seen in, you know, creative nonfiction uh, groups I belong to are really like, no, don't write about your family. Don't write about your children. Don't. It's like, but then we're getting back to that silence again, where yes. nobody's allowed to say anything because yeah. we're so afraid and living with that kind of fear is just awful. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I'd say, you know, be gentle, be compassionate. Um, and you make sure you can live with whatever you say. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's wise wisdom there. Now, who is Holly, Holly Gadry right now in this moment today? Oh, geez. I, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'd say I'm someone who's, you know, fairly <laughs> stable, but you know, we, we were just talking about my response to getting the AstraZeneca vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> there, that's thrown out the window. Um, so I, I'm not entirely sure. I think I'm just someone who's v- way more just accepting about who I am and the many people I am, and the many people I have been. And I find that I'm I'm less reactionary to things now. Um, yeah. If someone says something to me that you know in, insults my delicate sense of self, well, that delicate sense of self is a little bit less delicate now. So I'm I'm more likely to just not respond, to let it fly, or just not, not always just have this like implosive response to things or mm-hmm. explosive, depending on how I'm feeling. Uh, I, I would just say I'm a tiny bit, a tiny bit more self-assured and stable. But again, I don't, I don't want to say that I'm definitely someone without that. I'm not adding any external um, stress to myself. I'm not, you know, doing using substances and stuff like that to make matters worse and I'm better at just keeping people that I find you know off-putting away from me I don't put myself in situations that I'm going to find upsetting as much anymore that's that's a beautiful thing it's yeah. a beautiful thing and um what are you currently working on right now is there another novel on the way uh, I'm working on a ten of two things one of them significantly more finished than the other but I have a collection of poems um, called Rebellion Box, and they're poems about rebelling against our roles, rebelling against our place and our insignificance and our impotence in the universe. Yeah. Um, it's It takes from, there's uh, Joseph Gould, who founded the town of Uxbridge, which is not the town I was born in, but the town I did a lot of growing up in. When, uh, during he, when he was put in Kingston Penitentiary, he carved out of stove wood this little box and they send them, it was like to keep them busy, keep them from going absolutely crazy. And it was during the rebellion of 18, oh, 17? Anyways, that rebellion, Upper Lower Canada. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he, they carved these little boxes to send home to people to keep themselves busy and going insane when all this madness was happening all around them. So it's kind of a metaphor for how, what these poems are to me is, you know, keeping myself semi-sane when everything's going to shit mm-hmm. <laughs> everywhere yeah. and then 
I'm also working on a collection of short, that's that's almost done. Um, Great. It, it, so it's basically there. I mean, when I say done, I mean ready for people to see, not. Yeah, yes. It, there's, you know, that's about it. But then there's a, a collection of short stories I'm working on that uh, center around widow fantasies. So Ooh. widow, yeah. I, so I'm, I'm intrigued. Learning, <laughs> yeah. I read about widow fantasies a while ago and I just, you know, was fascinated by them. And it's, there, there's women after being married or partnered up or whatever, um, a few a few years, um, to, it's not uncommon for us to have these fantasies about being a widow. And that's not to say that, you know, we'd ever go out and like poison our husbands or partners or whatever. <laughs> um, it's just saying that with all the all the duties and obligations and subjugations put upon women that we often just dream of freedom, whether it be, you okay. know, just, so these fantasies that we create of just being free again, no kids, no, yeah. even, even like in my widow fantasies, I have my children. So. <laughs> 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 when you read Fuse and you'll be like, oh my God, he's such a saint is the worst woman ever but it's not that I don't love the person it's just I I just am so tired of feeling trapped by everything so yeah. all these stories um obviously not autobiographical at all I'm really going out here um are going to be about people in situations where they feel trapped and want want out and what the, what they're willing to do to get out Ooh. <laughs> I am intrigued. <laughs> yeah, can you write it for me then? <laughs> I'm tired just thinking about it. No. Oh. Well, Holly, a great big thank you for being a guest today on All About Canadian Books. I really enjoyed speaking with you. I really enjoyed Fuse. Um, and as I keep saying, and I'll I'll keep saying it, so brave. And I really admire you for putting it out there in the world and, and making a difference for other people out there. So congratulations. I will put links down below. You're welcome. So that our viewers can um, purchase a copy. And also I'll put a link to your website. So if anyone wants to learn more about you, they can visit your website. Thank you. My pleasure, my pleasure. And thank you everyone for watching. Be sure to come back next week because I'll have another author and another behind the book story. Thank you.